I'd say one of the major human preoccupations is trying to get from here to there. We start thinking about it and dreaming about it from the time we're this big. And I will try to give you another perspective. The real human journey is trying to go from there to here. And it's hard to reverse that because the programming is so intense. We really start out, and I'm watching my grandchildren. We went to a party yesterday with a lot of other kids and watching how they're looking at each other, trying to figure out how do I get their skills, their attainment, their capacities for myself? How do I become what they are doing? How do I find my way into the, you know, my grandson trying to figure out, watching his sister jump into the swimming pool, how do I get into the pool without being, in this case, terrified? Um, it was a really interesting thing. He was afraid to go down the slide. Um, and finally I held his hand and got him down the slide and I kind of realized that he was really afraid of judgment. He was afraid of being judged for not going down the slide or for not going down it elegantly or whatever the problem was, he was afraid. And, and we got him down to the bottom holding hands and then went off and did other things. And at one point Blanche looked over and he was at the slide all by himself and he went down alone. He went down because nobody was judging, nobody was watching, nobody was trying to tell him he was good or bad or accomplished or unaccomplished. He just did it for himself. And for a lot of us, we're doing it for everybody else. We're both afraid of not appearing to be successful, not appearing um, accomplished in other people's eyes, but turn the camera away, get rid of other people's gazes, and we find our way. That the real inhibition in life is other people. Getting there <coughs> reflects something that is absolutely essential in the human journey. We are very caught up in past, present, future, mostly past, future. And when we are in the present tense, we are here in often very judgmental terms. We're trying to think about why this is comfortable or uncomfortable, how I can have more of it, how I can change it, how I can get something else. You're in a dialogue with the present tense which actually separates you from it. The problem, of course, and we've talked about this a lot, is there's a you and an it. And the you and the it, the, du the dualistic system that we're all caught in, is a system that does not allow for present tense experience. What you truly understand when you're here is that there is nobody saying, oh, I'm here. You just are. You just are present. The minute there's a kind of switch into I am here, you've just lost it. It's interesting when I work with a lot of you because something happens when I look at you. And it's real, it's, it's a kind of misunderstanding. I look at you and all of a sudden you go, oh, he's looking at me. And you try to get present tense. And the problem is, one, where were you? And two, what is this thing you're trying to get to as you define as now? 
And it's really intriguing because mostly where one is is somewhere else. You know, thinking, dreaming, relaxing, kind of moving, you know, through the ether. And then suddenly my eyes come on you. And you go, <gasps> and it's like deer caught in the headlight. And you kind of go, okay, I have to be present, I have to be present, I'm present, I'm present, I'm going to be open, I'm quiet, I'm still, I'm da -da 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 -da. and you actually get noisier. And it's hard to, to work with you at that moment because you're trying so hard to be in the moment. You're trying so hard to be present. And the problem with trying to be present is that who is trying, for what purpose are you trying, what are you trying to achieve by trying to be present? And mostly, if you think about it, what you're trying to do is make me like you, or make me say, oh, sh they're present. Or there's a, go deeper into your connectivity, if you will, because you are present. But in fact, when you go through that dance, you are less present. You are in a state of, I'm being judged, I'm being watched, you know, I'm being acknowledged, I'm being uh, considered, whatever it is that you think is happening, and you're really at that point in the most dualistic space you can get into. You're a little bit like Elijah, my grandson, on the slide. You know, people are watching you go down and you're terrified. Performance anxiety, I guess they call it, but mostly performance anxiety is what we have all much of our life. Walking through life endlessly concerned and fearful about being judged, found wanting, not living up to somebody else's expectations, which somehow has turned into your own story. So now you're concerned about what other people think about you, and therefore what you think about you is secondary because you've given them all the power. You know, um, should I wash my hair today? You know, what will people think of me if I don't wash my hair? If it looks greasy and unwashed, what will the world say about me? Will I feel unloved? Will I feel un, uh, unattractive? Will I feel that I can't have people's acknowledgement that will boost my spirits? What is, what is the issue that so many of us have about others that allows us to give them all this power that keeps us in a certain sense separate and, and, and judged and fearful? And much, much of what that is, is, well, in the simplest sense imaginable, it's really about uh, survival. And it's about safety. Because if you are not embraced by the tribe, if you are not loved by the tribe, if you are not acknowledged by the tribe, you may be isolated from the tribe on some level. Your food may not be as, a, as available to you. Your uh, shelter may not be as available to you. And you may feel somehow very frightened not to be part of and included in that which gives you sustenance, that which gives you comfort and safety. So worrying about what other people think about you is a huge issue. And that worry starts to become a kind of constant underground noise in your head. And you are always thinking of yourself as an object in a sense as it's being perceived by outside as opposed to something that knows itself from the inside. So there is this extraordinary <coughs> need, there's this extraordinary need inside to stay safe, to stay accepted, stay acknowledged by the, by the whole group. And in a way, by doing that, you deny yourself a kind of inner truth. It's sort of when you decide, I don't care. I don't care. And how do you get to, I don't care? Well, I'll tell you, the simple version of that is when you discover that safety is not based on outside anything. Safety is what you feel in connection to your own truth and to your own being. Safety is finding something in you that is supportive, acknowledging, full of presence, and bigger than everything around you. When you find, we will call it yourself, all of the manifestations of that self on the outside no longer have power over you. The power is within you. 
You have given that power away because of fear and because you want other people to take care of you and protect you and love you and nurture you and be available to you. And we learn this very young. We learn it as little, little infants. Growing up, getting from there to here, means you have become an adult, you have become a grown human being, and you have realized how much you've given away, how much power you have allowed other people over you, and now it's taking it back. Take it back. But you can't take it back by creating a new, stronger ego identity, because that only makes it worse. You can only take it back by letting go of all of the elements in your life that you have given away. You surrender. You let it go. You, give away, you let go of the power other people have over you. You let go of all of your fears about being nurtured. You let go of everything in life and you just sit back, get quiet, find a place of profound stillness inside and you realize at that moment that everything you've been looking for outside you is within. It resides here, right here. The journey from here to there, it really ends when you realize there's no there. The journey to there is about a false arrival at a false construct. What is there? What is there? What have you built as there? It probably involves something like love and happiness. It may involve career. It may involve other people giving you awards or acknowledgement or recognition. It may be you know, having children and grandchildren and procreating and filling the world with more of whatever you think you are. You may think that's there. And in a little bit of a sense, there's truth to it. Because there is always part of here. Always. Here is there. But if you don't know that, if you really think there is somewhere else that you will get to, that you will arrive at, and that it is always eluding you, that it's always somewhere five steps ahead, or that if I do one more this or one more that, I will finally have it. And then even if you get it, even if you get the things you think you need to get, one of the great lessons of Buddhist teaching comes across, which is impermanence. And you got it, but it's already slipping through your fingers. It's already disappearing. Where is it going? I have my happiness. It's my happiness. Where is it going? It's going. You know, I mean, it's really, how does, it, how does it go away? Where does it go? And what do I do to get it back? And how do I get to the next there that will finally deliver it to me? How do I get there? You know, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? And of course, you're not doing anything wrong. You're being human. And being human is an ongoing, um, it's a little bit like... Um, Hamsters on a wheel. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. If I go faster, I'll get there. If I go slower, I get there. I'm going to 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 get there. It goes on and on and on and on. And then you die. You know? And you go, whoa, 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 what was that? <laughs> what was that? Where, why didn't I ever get there? Unless death is there, which maybe it is. But becoming an adult, becoming truly human, you get to this thing of going... I want to be here. I want to be here. I want to recognize that the there that I'm in is actually and always has been the here and now. This is it. The first problem with becoming here is recognizing what you might call its imperfection. This can't be here and now because it doesn't feel right. I don't have pure, perfect happiness. I haven't attained the things I was supposed to get. People around me are suffering. There's all this stuff going on. How can this here be what I want? How can getting here add up to anything? This here is not the thing I wanted. It's not there. And that confusion is a terrible confusion for people. Because the idea that there will be perfect is the drama and the illusion and the dream of your life. 
the true here and now is not perfect in the way you're imagining it to be, but it is perfect in a way that is inexplicable, and that is, it's perfect as it is. That it's not meant to be absolute one thing over another, it's meant to be this extraordinary collage of possibilities, moving in and out of one another constantly, happiness to sadness, sadness to happiness, accomplishments of failure, all of these things moving through the system all the time. You cannot lock them in. You cannot freeze it in a moment and say, I got it, because it won't last. You will get it for however long, maybe a minute, maybe an hour, maybe a month. I don't know what you'll get it for, but it will <laughs> break apart. When you accept that's how it works, when you say this is what it is, something strange happens. You start to settle into it. You start to relax and go, oh, here is all of this stuff going on. And when you get really relaxed into it, there's no longer a you and an it saying this is good and this is bad, this is better, this is worse. Suddenly, all of that interaction of you and it disappears and there's just the thing itself, the happening of life. Just this happening. When there's no you reacting to that, you, you have arrived at here. You are here. This is it. And if you're not reacting to it saying, this is terrible, this is wonderful, I want that, I shouldn't have this, once that disappears, and it does, you're simply here in the endless unfolding of whatever this mystery of being is. And there won't be anyone to figure it out or anyone who needs to figure it out. There will just be being, being itself, which is what you are. There are some elements of being that are worth noting. One of them is, it loves you. It's restful. It's true. It's allowing. It's forgiving. It has a quality of yes. There's nothing fighting it. And if stuff comes up to fight it, you'll get to look at that and you'll realize that's the here looking for there. Still looking for there. And something in the here that will be so strong and dynamic will look out at that little thing still looking for there and go, nope, it's an illusion. Nope, it can't happen. Nope, it's just the old mechanism of dreaming that's trying to reach for something else. And you'll just go, click, nope, and you come right back to here. And you'll just be here. And you will settle into here with an extraordinary kind of gratitude. Because the thing you've always been looking for in all of this there-ness is in the here-ness of now. It's right here. The entire journey of everybody sitting in this room listening to this talk is mostly trying to get there. Everyone's trying to get there. And the message that I and a lot of teachers now are giving is that you are already there there's nowhere else you could be. You are there, meaning you are here. The thing that's seeking for there is sort of what keeps you coming back here on some level, because at least you get one 10 minute, 20 minute, whatever, however long a period it is you finally arrive at here during this class, you get to be here. A lot of you get in that car and drive here because you want to be here, here. It's your once a week here. But you can have a here all the time. And not only can you, you do. The only thing that separates you from that is this, this noise. Projecting, pursuing, reaching for, dreaming of the there. It's hard to take that away from people because it takes away your safety. I had a new student this morning, Daniel, who arrived and... Uh, he was, he was so open. He said, I've come here with no expectation. 
meaning he didn't know what he was walking into for the life of him. And, and God knows I don't know what it's like to walk into this with no expectation. But I do know it was authentic, it was real, and it is the way to be here, to be surprised by whatever arrives. That is the way to greet the present tense. It is a constant surprise. You don't know what it will be, and sometimes it doesn't feel good. Some of those surprises are like, I'd rather have, not have that surprise, except the person who's reacting to that, you look at that and go, yeah, well, that, I know who that person is, been there, seen that, done that, and you let go of it. You let go. And as you let go of that person, as you let go of the individual mind, you return back into the openness and the availability of the unexpected. And that's what real life is. That's what real uh, spiritual maturity is about. That's what growing up is about. Growing up is about finally realizing that there is not there. This is there. And getting to that moment, getting to that place, is worth everything. And not to get to that place, and believe me, I watch people all the time who don't even know there's a here to be in. They have no idea that it isn't a constant there. My dad, up to the last the minute he died, wanted to build something he called Markdown, Markdown's Mall. He had a dream of a mall that would be for all the, for everybody who had, uh, I don't know what you call them, seconds or things left over in their corporations, in their trucks that they didn't have room for in their outlets. They would bring them to this one place and you would actually go in the middle and you walk onto their trucks and buy things. It's an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. He could never, ever get rid of it. And he died dreaming, and he's probably going to come back into another lifetime, except they won't have those stores anymore. But he would come back to, be go to try to make Mark Don's Mall. Mm -hmm. And I kept looking at the end of his life. I mean, it sustained him. He was going to be a millionaire. He was going to have everything happening. He had designs for it. It was such a really beautiful sort of thing that kept him going. But he always kept him away from being who he was. And I see this on and on and on and on. And what is it? What is it? I, I, I watch life unfold. I watch how it delivers when you get out of the way. Yes, you have to pursue things. Yes, you are part of the game. Yes, you need to be you in it. But as often as possible, you need to say, Thy will be done. I don't know how much to emphasize that beyond... It's a key to being alive in a joyful life. The life of you getting there is doomed to failure and unhappiness and struggle. That's what it is. And if that's what you're doing and that's what you're living, you know, I, you know, I, I will sit with you. I'll hold your hand. I love you. I, you know, I would, I will give you messages from the hereness of things. I will try to bring you back to here. But if you want to go there, great. You know, the great thing about going there is you're still here. You just don't know it. You just don't, you're just totally unaware. And so you're struggling and crying and being miserable and fighting with everything. And, and I go, you know, okay. I mean, that's really how the world works. The world is a real crazy place. And most people are struggling, struggling to, uh, to get to the place that will cause them more struggle. So, that's the message. Find your way here. This is it. It ain't anywhere else. It never will be anywhere else. Don't judge it. Don't try to make it perfect. Don't try to do anything with it. That's just your mind. Just enter into it and s jump off the diving board. Open your wings. Take flight. And watch what happens. You will soar. You will be supported by the air, the currents of air that basically move through the extraordinary reality of here. It, you have no idea how supportive it is. You know, have no idea how much it loves you, embraces you, takes care of you, provides for your ultimate safety, which is not about your mind or ego or body, because that's already doomed. <laughs> You're not going to get out of here alive, as they say. But the you that underlies all of this body-mind thing, it doesn't go anywhere. And once you get familiar with that you, 
and truly know yourself, you will be here. Any questions? As I was sitting here today, I was uh, coming tears coming to my eyes because I was saying, I'm forgiving. And then I'm forgiving myself for not being totally present to myself. And it was a, a cycle of that forgiveness, but it was to blessed and bring myself to the present. And after all that, I was then coming to this conclusion that I am happy to be me, me right here with you. And I was saying, I'm right here with you, my teacher. But then it also says, but I'm here with you. Be with you, <coughs> be friendly to yourself. And you no, know, this was the message that I just heard. It's a beautiful message. There's no, there's no two. There is no duality. Being with the teacher is being with yourself. I knew that with Rudy. You know, he was he was what I am if I could get out of my own way. Yeah. You know, it's the teacher who evaporates from being ego-minded entity, someone who's serving their own agenda, to just being, becomes a uh, energy field, if you will, that is. A field that is your field. It's the, it's one shared. It's one shared reality. There's, there's no me and you really. I mean, I, I know the world is based on that idea. We all give enormous power to the me and and you idea, but it's not true. It's ultimately not true. There's only one thing happening here, and we are that that very thing. And the mystery of that, the wonder of that, is something that will reveal itself to you moment to moment to moment to moment in a way that is beyond understanding and is worth it. It's what we hunger for. We just look in the wrong directions for a lot of reasons. One of them is our outer-directed culture tells us it's out there. It keeps telling us that over and over and over. The commercials we watch on television, the songs we hear, the movies we watch, the, the, the elections, the politics, everything says it's out there. How can you not believe it when there's almost nobody telling you, no, it's in here? Hearing that voice starts to transform this outer imbalance into an inner directedness that gives you harmony and balance, and then you discover you are the whole thing. You are the outer and the inner, and you're not disconnected from either. There's one thing happening, and once you are that thing, you just sit and you go, And that's it. It's just what you're describing. Bruce, working with you, I'm fully aware of that deer in the headlight thing. Um, it happens, and, you know, I, I don't know really what to do about it except to tell you what my experience was today. And that is normally I do exactly what you said, you know. Am, am I doing okay? Am I opening? Am I, you know, where are you taking me? Where am I going? <laughs> the whole thing. But for an in, instant, just for a moment today, I didn't care. I, only because I thought I got sort of tired. And it was, right. it was, that's, that's a great thing. Yeah, <laughs> I got tired. Let me tell you something about that instant. It's really interesting, I, you know. We exist in a timeless space. That instant that you think of as maybe being between one and four seconds actually has no time in it. it. Has no time. When you enter that space, you touch the timeless, that which always is. There is no beginning and middle. It just is. And you are definitely in that space. You are definitely in that space now. Even the honesty of the way you're talking to me and expressing the truth of that is so from that space. You know, one of the great things that comes out of timeless depth is honesty. Profound honesty, not caring about what other people think of you for speaking it. It's like, this is just what I am. This is who I am. It's such a heroic place to get to, from my perspective. And we celebrate it even in movies and theater. You know, we watch people arrive at that place. Her, truth. 
it's I mean it really it's the it's the last part of the third act of every of every show is when you finally speak the truth that has been unspoken. Getting to the unspoken is what this is all about. Having the courage to do it because you don't give it for anything anymore. You're just like it, what does it matter? I have to be myself. I have to speak my truth. That's what that's what comes about. You don't even have to speak it. You have to live it. You have to be it. You can't walk around living your life for everybody else. And the deer in the headlight thing isn't even exactly living for somebody else. It's just being distracted by everything else. It's living in, uh, I mean, the chatter, the mind chatter that keeps us going, which when you turn it off, you know, turns into television, turns into radio, turns into iPhone, turns into all of these different things that are going on to keep it kind of going. What finally happens, if you're lucky, is you do turn it off long enough to go, this is good, this is good. You have to force it in the, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Sitting and meditating for a lot of people for the first however long, 20 minutes, is like, oh God. You know, your mind is going and going, and then exactly what you described, you just get tired of it. When you get tired of it, something relaxes and you finally are there. You know, my own awakening took place after 40 years of meditating and not getting there. You know, talk about idiocy. You know, how many, how many, how long did I have to go before I said I give up? I had, I went 40 some, some years trying to get there. And I finally said, I can't get there. I don't know how to get there. I give up. And then I was there. I went, oh, I had to surrender, P period, surrender, give up. And it's really kind of wearing yourself out, <laughs> you know? And some of us take a longer time than others. Some people are smart enough, I was not one of them, to go, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, what are you doing? And I finally figured out, I didn't figure out, the thing that was doing it was just got exhausted and fell away. <laughs> it just went, oh, no more, gone. And that's been the greatest gift ever. And it takes place for all of us. And it takes place in timeless moments and ultimately timelessly, period. It's just done. It doesn't have to come back. You don't need it anymore because your safety will not rely on other people taking care of you or loving you or reinforcing you or telling you you're great or your hair looks beautiful today or whatever it is you think you need to make you feel good in the world. That goes away. You just feel good in the world. And what they say to you doesn't matter. You know, nice if they say it, no problem if they don't. It doesn't change anything. You know, mostly it's they're saying, you look so beautiful today because they want acknowledgement so they can feel safe. That's really what the game is. You know, we're feeding each other so we can support each other so we all feel connected and comfortable in a world that is falling apart every minute and being created every minute. But it's never stable. It looks stable. I mean, this room looks like it's going to hold together, but we all know we live in California. There's no guarantees here. At any given second, this all goes apart, and so, does, so do our lives. What doesn't fall apart is that which underlines all of this, and you won't know what that is until you let go of your enormous addiction to the there out there that's going to take care of you. It doesn't take care of you. Here it takes care of you. Here it loves you. It loves you. And that's the one thing I know when I sit all I am and all I experience is how much I love you. And I just want you to feel it. And I don't want you to feel it for you, ego-minded you. I want you to know that you're, you're that, you're, that ocean of love is your home. It's not my ocean. You know, for me to walk around, put a claim on just off of Santa Monica, this is my ocean, you know. <laughs> it's not my ocean. It expands everywhere. There's nobody owns this thing. Nobody. And, and nobody has a right to it except that we all it's our birthright to be that. Anyone else? Michael? Well, it seems like there's an inherent tension between, on the one hand, we've got the here and goal-directed activity. And you know, what I'm going to say, in its highest form, purpose. So, on the surface, it seems, well, it's, I have to make a choice between one or the other. I'm either here or I'm either... I'm either pursuing a purpose, but I know that's not true. It's, it's, there's, there's a re there, there needs to be, there wants to be a reconciliation between the two. The reconciliation is just going yes to the totality of that. Not thinking one supersedes the other or one's better than the other. It all works in tandem. You know, look, I, my, I, my career was over three years ago. I mean, it was over. I just came completely uh, 
retired and was joyful in my retirement and grateful to be done with having to do in the world. And then all of a sudden, recently, stuff has come up which is telling me to do again. But it's really interesting to me because nothing in me is going yes or it's not it's not it's not fighting it. It's okay, okay. And what's one, what's wonderful if what I do happens, great. If it falls apart in a minute, it's fine. I have no attachment. It's just rising into being and falling away. We could live like that. You don't have to live with consequence of if I do this, I will have that, and this will come about, and that will happen. You just let all that go, and you just allow this thing to happen, and you get out of the way, and your mechanism of a body-mind construct will make it happen. It'll work through you. It's really amazing how it does that, and you just bring the best you can to the table. And again, if you can do it without the need for reward or expectation, you can just be surprised by what happens. And, and if it really turns out <coughs> to be terrible, you know, what I'm doing could turn out to be terrible. I haven't written a word in three years. If it's really crap, then it's crap. And what will, be ha what will happen? I'll be back in retirement and just in faster than I thought, which I already love. <laughs> you know? So it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And if it does matter, then it just means you're caught back in a very old tape that's getting, starting to play again, and you should pay attention to that. Because do you want to be in that tape? Do you want to live in that space? You can, again. You can, you can, any awakened being can get caught again in ego-minded bullshit. Anybody can do that. But why? It's, you already know where it leads. Nowhere. <clears throat> it goes nowhere. So, be, do, live from this very simple place of here, rather than there. Just be here. Now. There's another way of saying that, do not become identified with the purpose. Yeah, of course. But that's, you know, intellectualizing it kind of helps the ego mind understand it, but it's, it doesn't get you there. The getting there is kind of thy will be done, giving up, surrender, which really, you know, really talked about it endlessly. And I thought every year I practiced surrender, surrender, surrender. My experience in the end was that I did let go of stuff. And finally, at the very last moment for me, the Bruce guy, one little thing came up. I don't know what it was, the bruising thing, and, and it just fell away, and then there literally was nothing left because I had, over the course of years of meditation, let go of a lot of crap. And suddenly there was nothing much to let go of, and then the little thing, the last turd fell away. And then here, I, here we are with whatever this is, whatever this is, but it's, it's, uh, it feels it's much better than what was. Todd? What I noticed in the times that I'm present, which appear to be lazy to some people because you're not looking for anything other than that's here. Is that I don't have to make a decision on what to do because what I'm doing in that moment is obviously exactly. So the choice is being made on some other level. There's no desire or drive to do anything other yeah, but, than what But stuff will come up. Of course. And then when it comes up, I mean, you can kind of go yes or no to it, but it's interesting to see what the thing is that would go no. And the thing I keep finding is just keep saying yes. You know, I don't even have to make the choice. I go, okay, this came up. I mean, occasionally there'll be a no, but it will arise all by itself, spontaneously, and it's, 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 an, it's just no, you know? you know? I'm not going to give that guy who's been sitting outside the music center for 15, 20 years, who's sitting with the same hand, asking for the same handout. This guy must be a multimillionaire by now. He's been there for so long. I just go, no. I used to give him. I used to always give him because he was appearing right in front of me. But when he's there all the time, I feel like an idiot. I'm like a bank just giving away my money to this guy. He's, he's, he's done very well. You know, there are no's that come up and then there are moments where you just, it goes yes and you do it. And, and I know you know that, you know, and it's, and it's, and, and you, uh, in a way it's waiting for the thing to come. I guess if, if there's some discomfort with waiting, you can stir the pot, but it's not really you stirring the pot. The pot will start to be stirred. It'll, stuff happens. It's quite amazing how it happens. There's, there's a master chef at work here, and we're all, we're the soup. You know, it's going to get flavored, it's going to get, you know, it's going to be a little bitter, then salty, and then a little thin sugary, and then it's going to be perfect, and then it will be served up, and it'll be for you. I'm not really sure where this is going. Um, as you were talking, I was thinking, well, there are real-world consequences, 
as an academic, I get evaluated every few years, and if I get a bad evaluation, I can lose my job, and I can lose my house. And then as you continue to talk, and other people continue to talk, I just got that the whole notion that somebody else can evaluate anybody is an illusion. I do what I do, and I'll be good, or I'll be bad. Well, there, there, there are definitely consequences. To, but I can't tailor myself no, no, to well, what I think right, we're people, going to You can't, want. but you, people do all the time. And the safety issue comes very strongly into that situation because they have power over taking your job away and they can take your house away and take everything away. So yes, it makes, it makes sense that we fear the evaluation. We, we fear all that stuff. However, being who you are with that fear makes your functioning probably less effective than being who you are without that fear. Yes, yes, and, and I often wish, I mean, they'll, they'll say, well, you're going to be evaluated next week. I wish they wouldn't say that at all, that they just drop in and they'd see who we really are, and it wouldn't have to be a dog and pony show. Right. Well, I mean, I understand that. <laughs> but you do, do, do understand that whether they tell you or don't tell you, your job is to be, I'm doing, I'm doing all and the best I can and function as you and be free inside of that you won't you'll be amazed at how much better you function as a human being you know my entire career was based on flow you know i mean i had to just telling people in introductory class today my throat chakra had to be open and flowing so i could walk into a room with studio executives and pitch an idea and they would come back to me and saying here's money do it that supported my family, took, put the kids in school. It all came from this. I didn't do this for that. I opened this and that's what happened. When you open yourself, all your heart, your mind, your, 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 your ability to communicate, your gut, when you do all of that's open, you function really well. The world acknowledges that, trust me. Because not many people do function well. And so those who do will find something that comes back to them to keep them going. That just kind of works that way. And if it doesn't come back to you, you'll be wise enough and smart enough and present enough to find the thing that will buoy you up and carry you through whatever life has to present. You know, you'll find a creative solution. You, you, you <laughs> life tests us on so many levels, but the best way to flow through life is to be empty of ego mind and just be free to be the energy of of the moment, of the moment, of the unexpected, of surprise, of creativity. You know, the great thing about writing, you know, you sit with a blank page and something has to arise. I can never, ever force that into play. I cannot. And if I did, it would look terrible. I sit and I wait. And I... And then it comes. If it doesn't come, I can't be a writer. Then I have to do something else. But it comes. It keeps coming. So, it's, it's availability. It's present tense mind that really allows all these things to take place. Life wants to be wonderful. It wants to be wonderful, full of wonder. It wants to be that. If it's not that, it's because you're afraid that it won't be. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Terrell? I was sitting here in class today, and I've got years and years of sitting here and techniques and this and that, and this thinking to myself, oh, my heart you know, it really needs to be more open. I wasn't obsessing on it or anything, but I thought that maybe my heart should be more open. So I'm giving that some attention. And then the fireworks are going off in my clown chakra. Clown chakra. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering, I mean, you're saying you have to give up, and here I've got this whole plethora, this whole bag of tricks that I've spent all these years, and I'm trying to manipulate things, and where's the balance between staying in the present moment and trying to be open and trying to work the energy? Well, I mean, that's at the core of what I'm trying to talk about. Um, and the shorthand is, if there's a you working the energy, you're not in the moment. There's a you and an it trying to get there. And that won't work. And you've been working it a long time, Terrell. And why aren't you there? Where are you trying to get? When do you think you will arrive? What do you have to do to make it happen? It will never work. 
It will never work. Stop now. You can't get there, but you are here. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, I may have to leave early-ish today, so we'll have to eat fast <laughs> and, uh, and, and clean up. And if those of you who are around can help Blanche clean up after lunch, that would be great. And uh, be back in a few, about four weeks, and uh, we'll see you again. And, and this class every Sunday, please feel free and open to attending, because everyone who sits here ultimately is used by the present tense. Trust me. No matter how much they may not be aware of it, it functions through them. And, and I think everyone is aware of it. And you are, uh, you, are, you are present, and your presence creates a complete flow of presence for everybody. So it's a very, very mutually supportive situation, and everybody walks away from here having been here. Thank you, guys.